the vast achievements of Bumbling Moron Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin finished third in a beauty contest. Sarah said that she wants to prepare for a career in television broadcasting by majoring in telecommunications and political science. It is no wonder that she has also been recognized by Who's Who, since she has displayed her leadership in all areas from academics to student to politics to athletics, having led her basketball team to the championship of the state tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, contestant number eight, Sarah Heath. The winner is gorgeous. The woman who slam dunked former VP candidate for the title of Miss Alaska 1984, Marilyn Blackburn. Sarah Palin attended Hawaii Pacific College for a semester and then attended North Idaho Community College for just two semesters. Sarah Palin then transferred to University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho for two semesters, then transferred to Matanuska Sasitna Community College for one semester. Then she transferred back to University of Idaho for three semesters to earn her degree a bachelor's degree in communications slash journalism. Palin worked as a junior sports reporter for KTUU-TV and KTVA-TV in Anchorage for a few months in 1988. Sarah Palin admits to receiving a D in macroeconomics. Since nobody wanted to be mayor of Wasilla, Sarah Palin ran for office. Here's Wasilla City Hall. And here's the sprawling town community. There's nearly two buildings. Their population was 6,700, and they had a surplus of $2 million. In just six years of Palin, two three-year terms, Wasilla had a debt of $22 million. But destroying Wasilla wasn't enough for this baffle wit. So Sarah Palin ran for governor of our fourth smallest state. Her campaign was based on alleging her opponent abused his power. Knowles was never found guilty of any wrongdoing, but Palin was. And in just two years, under D in economics Palin, Alaska now has a three billion dollar budget shortfall through 2010. Palin also ran for VP during her governorship. Palin felt she needed help to win. Hallelujah. Come on, raise up your hands. Raise them, hold them and raise them up here. Come on, talk to God about this woman. Come on, talk to God about this woman. We declare favor from today. We say favor, favor, favor. We say grace, my God. We say grace to be reign upon her in the name of Jesus. My God, you make your joy, you make room, you make ways in the desert. And I'm asking you today, we are asking you as the body of Christ in this valley, make a way for Sarah, even in the political arena. Make a way, my God. Bring finances her way even for the campaign in the name of Jesus. And above all, give her the personnel. Give her men and women that will back her up in the name. There's a reason the McCain campaign keeps Governor Sarah Palin away from the press. I want to play an excerpt from an interview that Palin did with the CBS Evening News anchor Katie Couric, where she was asked about the bailout package. Listen to this. Why isn't it better, Governor Palin, to spend $700 billion helping middle-class families who are struggling with health care, housing, gas, and groceries? Allow them to spend more and put more money into the economy instead of helping these big financial institutions that played a, a role in creating this mess. That's why I say I, like every American I'm speaking with, we're ill about this 
position that we have been put in where it is the taxpayers looking to bail out. But ultimately what the bailout does is help those who are concerned about the health care reform that is needed to help shore up our economy. Um, helping the oh, it's got to be all about job creation, too, shoring up our economy and, and putting it back on the right track. So health care reform and reducing taxes and reining in spending has got to accompany tax reductions and tax relief for Americans. And trade, we have, we've got to see trade as opportunity, not as a competitive, um, scary thing, but one in five jobs being created uh, in the trade sector today. We've, we've got to look at that as more opportunity. All those things under the umbrella of job creation this bailout is a part of that did you get that if john mccain wins this woman will be one 72 year old's heartbeat away from being president of the united states and if that doesn't scare the hell out of you it should i'm 65 and have been covering politics as you have for a long time that is one of the most pathetic pieces of tape i have ever seen for someone aspiring to one of the highest offices in this country that's all I have to say. Yeah, but she's cramming a lot of information. You That's, know, there's no excuse for that. She's supposed to know a little bit of this. Yeah. You know, don't, don't make excuses for her. That's <laughs> pathetic. It was not her best answer. I, I agree with you on that. Thanks, Jack. No, but there's no question that people do not put their names forward. And most, I think a lot of Americans consider that cowardly. There's no question yeah, about it. Yeah, I do. I consider it cowardly. So but regarding these allegations, which I, I don't think my colleagues didn't make it up. They heard it from people who said, you can't use our name regarding these geography things about Africa and about NAFTA. Are they yeah, not true or are they misinterpreted? Not, no, it's not true. And I do remember having a discussion about NAFTA as we talked about Alaska's relationship with Canada and how we, heaven forbid, we go in and just unilaterally think that we're going to renegotiate NAFTA as it had appeared that Barack Obama, his position was, yeah, he wanted to go renegotiate. I remember having a discussion with a couple of debate preppers. So if it came from one of those debate preppers, you know, that's curious. But having a discussion about NAFTA, not, oh my goodness, I don't know who's a part of NAFTA. Um, so no, I think that if there are allegations based on questions or comments that I made in debate prep about NAFTA and about uh, the, the continent versus the country um, when we talk about Africa there, then those were taken out of context. And that is, that's cruel, it's mean-spirited, it's immature, it's unprofessional, and those guys are jerks if they came away with it, with taking things out of context and then tried to spread something on national news that's not fair and not right. Governor, you said in July that you would have to, someone would have to explain to you exactly what it is the vice president does every day. In my comment there, it was a lame attempt at a joke, and yours was a lame attempt at a joke too, I guess, because nobody got it. Of course, we know what a vice president does, and that's not only preside over the Senate, and we'll take that uh, position very seriously also. I'm thankful that the Constitution would allow a, a bit more authority given to the vice president also, if that vice president so chose to exert it in working with the Senate. And uh, making sure that we are supportive of the president's policies, and making sure, too, that our president understands what our strengths are. No! No, Governor, the Constitution does not allow a bit more authority if the Vice President so chose to exert it in working with the Senate. You would not be some kind of senatorial hall monitor. You would not be a veto or a censor or a balance. And even if you think you would somehow obtain those powers from somebody, don't pretend the Constitution will give them to you. Thankfully, our founders were wise enough to say we have this position and it's constitutional. Vice President will be able to be not only the, the position flexible, but it's going to be sort of those other duties as assigned by the president. It, a simple thing. I don't think that was a gaffe at all in, in stating uh, what the truth is, and that is we've got flexibility in the position. The president will be directing in a lot of respects what the vice president does. The vice president, of course, is not a member uh, or a part of the legislative branch except to oversee the Senate. That alone provides a tremendous amount of flexibility and authority if that vice president so chose to use it. You're wrong. The word flexibility appears nowhere near the, in the Constitution. You've memorized everything else, Governor. You couldn't memorize the job description in three months? Four tries? I mean, I'd like my president and my vice president to have memorized the Constitution and to abide by it. Or at least I'd like them to know more about the Constitution than I do. Or than Brandon Garcia does in the third grade. Maybe I'm raising the bar too high.
but at least wait until you achieve office before trying to seize power extra constitutionally. The founders, Governor, were not George Bush and Dick Cheney. Give me something to work with here, Governor, or go home. And please don't forget to take your lovely parting gifts with you, including the home version of the Vice President game.